Hello, everybody. So how are you all? So here we go. Another Woodworking Wisdom. So I'm Jason. We are back in the hand tool room again. Got a cold window in the cameras and the questions for you. So if you've got anything you want to ask us, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. A few weeks ago, we did hand cut mortise and tenons. So we broke that down over two sessions to show you how you can hand cut your mortises, hand cut the tenons. So you, yeah, you might have some machines. It'd be lovely for me to spin the cameras around in my room in here and kind of go don't have a machine in here no it's i lie i've got a proxim mini grinder that i've got in for a session coming up but haven't got any machines so we showed you how you could hand cut them some of you that might be hopefully inspiring to have a go i mean paul we're just discussing actually about how long would it take us to do what we're going to try and do in the next two sessions if we did it start to finish i reckon we'd make this in a day if i really put my mind to it and got on with it didn't have to worry about setting things up so much if I've got all the machines, yeah, okay, probably half the time. But so what we're going to do, our mortise and tenons, we did these. So this is one of the joints. Let's oh, take them apart. We've got our cut joints on here. We've got mortises all cut. Bring that back over. Look, have a look on there. So it's a bit cold. There we go. Camera free, look. We've got our joints. We know they fit together. We did those. We're going to use these in a minute. So our aim give you an idea of what I'm going to show you. And this is something we did as one of the courses a while back. A small side table. You can never have enough small side tables at home, can you? Maybe you've got your chair and you want to have a table next to it in the lounge, put your cup of tea on it, all those things. Maybe you can't buy one the right size to fit in that gap. So with what we've shown you in those last two sessions, it was a nice idea to take our little table so we've got our mortise and tenons that we cut. Could we turn them into a side table? That was all, always going to be the aim a little bit from my point of view. So we did all the joints. We cut those. So today, what we're going to look at, got a number of little things I want to do. First of all, and I've done some. I know you think this is cheating, but yes, it takes a bit of time to do the prep on here. Got to cut the buttonholes. The buttons are how we're going to hold the top onto the underframe and the carcass. So we're going to cut the buttons next week, but I've got to cut all these little holes before we assemble it. Then we're going to do the curve rail, cut the tapered leg, plane it in. So I've got a few things to show you today. So let's do this button hole. Let's get what we want, select the weapons. We've already marked out a little bit, kind of cheating, I know. So let's have a look on there. And I'm going to bring the camera in just a little bit, see if we can get you a bit closer. The wobble will go. One here, I've already given myself... A lamp mark of where I want to be. I've set up the marking gauge, and this is a mortise gauge. So in reality, I've set it up for the width of the chisel. Bring my hand back. There you go. Look at the screen. So I've set it up for the width of the mortise chisel. I've also set it up for the spacer that I want to use. And again, if you looked at the mortise video, you'll find I did a spacer block. So I've got that as a width. My spacer block, if I go... Where we are on here. Bring back. There you go. So I've got line there. One. Turn it over. Do the other. So, hope you guys see there. I've got those two lines. Pencil line either end tells my stop point. Again, we can do this all by hand. So I'm just going to load this in the voice and I'll play with your camera for you. So let's just pin that up. We can bring you back just a little bit. That will do. So I've got this in the vice. Now, I've deliberately looked at where I put it in the vice. We've got the bit of plastic, which gives me my offset. The plastic is Corian. You don't have to use plastic. I made these up a long time ago. It just reduces the amount of wear I get. So I've got it in the vice. We put a clamp on the front, hold it down. My marks are there. I've got the spacer that gives us the distance to set it down. Mallet, I'm going to want that. Glasses, just to see. So our chisel, I'm going to start with doing a break line. So the back of the chisel on our line, nice and straight. One side. Turn it round, we can do the other. Easy bit done there. I'm going to go back through there. So the plastic gives me 
a spacer block which I can rest the chisel against, keep things square, work one direction. I've turned my body round. Check how things are, clean them up. I'm going to work back through. On these, got the bevel face up. I can turn it over, which I've just done, because I want to chisel some of this out. Try not to crowbar this too much. So in other words, pushing down using the back of the chisel. I don't want to roll the outer edges. I'm going to come back round, trying to make sure I'm not getting my head too much in the way of the camera as well. First session a bit done. Going to go a little bit deeper. Now, these obviously haven't got to go all the way through. You could do this if you have machine mortiser. Or maybe you're watching yesterday, you could do electric router. But you'd need to make up a jig. So there is that dilemma on certain things. You can make spend more time making the jig than it could take you to cut these out by hand. Right, getting somewhere. I want to clean the waste out. So I want smaller chisel. This is six mil normal beveled edge chisel. Now the joy of actually making something like this by hand, I suppose, first of all, you've made it. Um, quite a talking point. I saw a table that I gave a friend a while back, and it looks stunning where he's got it now. I kind of like it back in ways. Exactly the same style of table. The nice thing, he had some relatives there and we were talking about it and they couldn't believe I'd made this little table. So six mil chisel, just using really, pull those fibres out. To the fact that it's not as wide as the mortise chisel, easier to control down in here and remove that bulk out. I can use the mortise chisel to cut and give us the strength to cut it out. This I'm almost just using to scratch out the bottom. Just seeing where we are on the camera. A little bit to get right in this end. Sever those fibres. Good. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to get the holding board that we've used before back out. Hoping. So where we go. Just a bit too far over for that. So if I bring it that way round, probably see that's better. Put the clamp back on just to hold things about. Don't play around. And what are these interesting things with this? What else could you use? I've started playing a lot with a little router plane in here. Kind of like this. Problem with this now, the blade whips width of my thumb. So if I put it over the hole, I haven't got a lot either end to get anywhere. There's not a lot of movement due to the length of this. So I started thinking, is there a way that we could set up a depth stop? So the little six mil chisel we've got, I've set one up. I put one of the collar stops we use on the drill. So therefore, I can lock it off. Now, if you're going to do this sort of thing, there is a grub screw. I've locked it off on the top of the chisel. Don't do it on the back because you don't want it digging in or marking it. But that gives me a way of setting this up. that I can scratch this in and set my depth. And know that I'm not going to go too deep. So this is really now just cleaning out the bottom. Give us a nice, clean, flat bottom hole. But also make sure I get down to the depth I want. So that collar stop, quite useful for that, and it's better than a piece of masking tape. Looks good. Just going to get the one without, just to get in the corner there. Good, last button hole done. Now you can see where I've done the others before we got to this. 
So if I flip over, small tap out. The buttons will become apparent what they are next week. So we've got our little hole. Look at those squares. Quite easy to do, didn't take much time. Um, those of you who got your electric router and want to do this, you'd still probably be making a jig. How are you going to do that? And Okay, if you go with two fences, maybe run off either side, I don't know, but let's go to there. Right, let's just lose that. I'm going to take the glasses off. I'm just going to move the chisel out of the way for a second. I know Cole Wind's sat there now and he's got his hand up, so I've got to pay attention to him, really. Okay, what have you got, Colin? So, yeah, just a quick question from Frederick. What's the timber? Is it tulip? This is tulip wood again. So when we did the mortise and tenon video, we started off with four tulip wood lugs, tulip wood rails. You could use whatever you like. Little table I've got on here. Um, this is the original this was ever based on. This is all in ash. This is standing as a thing. So, and it, the nice thing with this is a table, it's not overly big. Doesn't take you too long. As in time-wise, got something that's a talking point. You made something that's unique, different, fits in the place you've got. And I'm sorry if this gets any of you into trouble that you might have to make a table, okay? But isn't that quite nice? You've made a little side table. Now, um, one of the things I'm going to look at doing next week when we do the video for this, is probably do up the cutting list and give you an idea how big this is. But you can vary this depending on where you want to put it. The only reason we had tulip, we've got quite a bit of it. It's something we use regularly in here because it machines quite nice. It works easily. We have good stock. It would have been nice to make another ash one, but we haven't got the ash here at the moment. And um, those guys in the UK, timber seems to be becoming a, a bit of a shortage problem in certain things. So the tulip did work quite nicely. All right. On our rails, we now need to set up. I want to do a curve. I want to lighten them. I've got quite good over the years of trying to figure out ways of working, if you like, by myself. So I'm just grabbing some of the gear I'm going to want. So we put that rail on. I've got it there. I want to put a curve on here. I've got a couple of pencil marks either end to give me a guide of how far in I want to be. My depth mark is here. I've got three little blocks. Some nice big spring clamps. So I can clamp that up. Doesn't have to be spring clamps, but these are quick and easy to set up. They work beautifully for this. That one there. Middle block. Got to go the other way. So it's have that clamp that we just used. Hold that down. Set to my setup line. All right. So I'm hoping, let's just show that. To there, so I tilt that. I have block on here that finishes flush, comes down the edge, same the other end. This one's got a little bit, comes up to a bit of a point, set up to the block and clamped in place. Then you take your steel rule and we put it in. So I bend it, I put it in there. All right, so let's have a quick look on, on camera there. So you can see how I can bend that get my shape, get a curve, quite nice to do. I could, at this stage, just say, oh, I want to come up more, I could adjust the block. But quite an easy way of setting things up so you can actually achieve that aspect of then taking your pencil and draw your curve. I've got this scope I even played around with. You can alter what you get as a curve by putting pressure on the end. You could clamp it on the blocks. So it depends on what you want as a shape. I just want the simple arch, but that gives me a way of doing that and setting it out all by myself using one simple steel ruler and a couple of little spring clamps. So we get those out of the way. Take our blocks, put them there. We now have, I hope you can see, got our curve. Let's see if we can bring the camera back just a little bit on there. We've got our curve shape down through here, nice and easy to do. We've got to cut this out. Um, I'm going to have to have it facing me, I'm sorry. I've got to see the line. I'm going to put in the vice. Now, some of you boys and girls out there will have Magic Fen Craig did a nice session the other week. Bandsaw. Um, I'm not allowed one in here. 
it's a hand tool room. They, they bend things like that for me. So it's suddenly like, how would you do this originally? You could have old-fashioned type coping saw, old-fashioned bow saw, or you can just have a hand saw. So what I'm going to do, gone Japanese saw, so cutting on the pull stroke, about an inch in between, I do a series of straight cuts. This is an old-fashioned way of shaping something before we had all this mechanical stuff. Uh, Why well, Japanese saw, thinner blade, means it cuts quicker. Cuts pulling towards me, nice and accurate. Pretty quick cutting, I think you'll agree. You'll see what we're doing in a moment. Nearly up to halfway. Now you're trying to do these about an inch apart, 25 mil. I don't know whether they said about how I do this, and I did this with some students. They all kind of seem slow, but. You understand the luxury of having a bandsaw after this, maybe. <laughs> Nearly there, a couple to go. Now, the Japanese saw we've got has got steel back, so it gives it a bit more strength. Another weird thing, which I'll show you in a minute, we grip right on the end of the handle. I'm hoping you'll probably see my hand in a minute on the top, I'll show you that. Those of you who use your hand plane a lot will probably understand this, or maybe even standard Western-style Senon saw. So if I grip this, I tend to put my finger over the top. Right there, clip it in the palm, right back on there, finger on there, that gives me a nice motion. Other thing, got to have this action of being able to clear your body. Probably camera two there, Cole, would be good. This has got to come back and clear. I had students were stood in front of this, you're trying to side to it, blocking everything. Your body gets in the way. You've got to clear it. Think of your body position. It's going to be really important on the next bit in a minute. Okay, good. Let's show you what we've just done. Lots and lots. Let's just go to camera for a minute, Cole, and then we'll do uh, lots of straight cuts down to our line. All right. And like I said, this, <laughs> it'd be lovely to have a bandsaw, wouldn't it? But... Some of you might not have a bandsaw. So how can I add a curve to something like this? Gives you the aspect of how simple this is going to be. It's going to look a bit brutal. Just tighten this back up. Go on then, mate. What you got? So Martin's asking, um, with Japanese saws, what one do you recommend as a general purpose saw? Um, you're going to be shocked a bit, but I'm going to use a different saw in a second. What we've just used is up on the bench here, a sakuning black handled little saw, okay? We do two of these. There is one with a front curve tip, which I actually used at home the other week to get in and cut some plywood that I couldn't get to, as in right on the tip. So I used that. These have an interchangeable blade. It has a back. All right, there we So you can even change the blade. You can have spare blade. You can have two different saws with this. Don't go with something too coarse to start with. Other thing with this, which is so fundamental, and the back on this helps with this cuts pulling. That makes sense? So we'll only cut there. You've got to throw it back. Not too much pressure behind it. Don't go forcing it. So let's have a look at some of these, which is, this is more of a rip saw. How do I know it's a rip saw? It's got no back. So... Now, if you push this, you'll bend it. Quite a, an amazing shape. It'll spring back. I've watched a great video online of how these are made traditionally in Japan. Wow. Okay. So they are quite springy. But if you push this and force it, yes, you'll bend it as you go through. So this will only cut, again, coming back. Bit aggressive to start with. Now, on here, and you can't see this on the camera. If I try and start there, trickier. If I'm nice and light, not putting any pressure, I can start it easier. 
because uh, next thing on here, which you won't see, the teeth here are finer. They get coarser towards the front. Very difficult to show that on the cameras. Right? So if I start nearer the handle, gently put it up, it will cut. Then I get into my stroke, it will cut more aggressively on those coarser teeth. So by having a finer set nearer the handle, coarser towards the far end, you've got that adjustment. So we're looking at that sort of detail as well, because this makes it easier to start with. Most people, when they go to use these, try and start wrong. They get too aggressive. They push down. It won't go anywhere. It's hooked in. And what's happening now? I'm pushing down. You want to get this to stir, light pressure, hardly anything. Get it controlled, then go. All right, so that's quite an important part. But get a general purpose one, fantastic tool to use. You will find there are different things. I said we're going to play with another one once we've done what we're doing now. And I'm going to go to the other end of the scale, something a little bit bigger and quicker to do. All right, okay, get my breath back a little bit. So we've got our curve. You can't see it. We've done all those cuts. Chisel, mallet. I like this. I have bevel down. I might even go wider chisel in a minute. So what we're going to do, I'm working down to my shape. See if I can get a couple more to do that. What well, that one did nicely. Let's just have a quick look to give you guys an idea of what's going on better on the overhead for this. There's my line. I can use the chisel. It will break off a line. I can then go deeper. So quite an easy way of starting to create a shape. So I can go right down to the step. Then I can go deeper by raising the handle up. This is great if you've had a bad day. You want something to take a little bit of energy out on. And those, then that off. Got to work from the outer edge to the middle. Central. Turn round, go come from here. Got to look at where I'm cutting now. Now I'm even going to do something because I'm, I know I'm moving that camera a bit more. I'm going to turn it around. You guys might see more then as well. I might have to lean in to see my pencil line. Got a bit to go, yep. Coming back to the first little one, trying to get a depth line. So again, the whole time with this, bevel is face down. That limits how deep it will go. Looks nice. A little bit more of a, want to come down a bit more, save me a bit of effort. Good. Now, get some of you thinking, you've, you've got your band saw and it's out there. That's got the wrong blade on it. Got something a bit too wide, it won't cut that curve. This might be quicker than changing the blade. Just checking the shot. Getting the... Hurrah. Good. So, only downside with this is all the bits now you trip over on the floor. That's looking good. A little bit brutal. I don't know if we can see on camera free there, Cody. Have a move about a bit. You can see our line. We've got, we've got most of our shape. Quite quick and easy to do. A couple of options I could play with. Let's see what's going to work. I could go with the chisel a little bit more. I need to be working 
downhill. So I've just picked up flexi cut drawer and I've got to turn it over. I want the back face down. This is about trying to save a little bit of time. Flexi cut draw knife, why? Because it's nice and thin section. It's only three mil with that. So nice to work on here. By being thinner, there's less, less friction, less effort to pull that blade through. So there's less resistance is probably the better word. One side, got some of the bulk out of the way. Turn it round. Quick look on there, see what's happening. And yeah, it takes a little bit of effort just to pull in. Right, okay. Ooh. Good. Hopefully. We're starting to get more of a shape. Camera free, Colin, just a little bit. And then they are coming to you. You can see we're getting more of a curve. Fantastic. Right, good. What have you got? Okay. Do, you, do, you, do you have this problem on your training videos or not? <laughs> Can we get you a treadle leg to do this? Maybe that would... Okay. Well, I was just going to ask you this question to give you a breather, really. Okay. Um, so Adrian's just asking, he knows you're demonstrating the cabinet making stuff today, but could you just give a brief explanation on how you sharpen your box refining tool, the square edge tool? Okay. Now, they are done with the small diamond file. All right. We do a DMT credit card diamond file. You want a medium. That works fantastic. If you also go to the website and you look at the tools, I have short video attached to it there. All right. Henry Taylor also on their website have a video showing it from memory as well. But I know we did a knowledge blog as well on how to sharpen them. But basically using the diamond file, if you take the chisel and you're holding it in the handle, you've got that sharpened edge out here and around the front. I do a micro cut across the top with the diamond file. Just pushing down it, take the bear off. And then everything else is sharpened out the side, up the front. Okay, hopefully that gives you an idea. There are those videos to watch. And also when we did the box making YouTube videos a month back, I did an octagonal one. There's one before there. Go back to those. Have a quick look. They explain it beautifully in there. All right. That's not, I don't want to answer it now, but they will show you better than they can with a piece of wood and nothing. All right. Okay. Any others? Got it? Good. Right. Okay. Select different weapons. What have we got? Okay, spoke shaves. We've done the hard work taking the bulk out. Now, I'm looking at the spoke shaves as I'm picking them up. Got different things here. I should have just taken the rack off the wall and done that. That would have been easier. I've got curb. So, curb bottom on here. That really shows. Bring them into there, maybe. Right. So, this has got a curve. I've got line also one that's got a really shallow curve. I have a flat one. Now, depending on the manufacturer will determine how much curve there is. This one will actually, got quite a lot of curve, will rock a bit. That's a bit flatter. Even a flat, flat one, and this is dead flat across the bottom due to the length of this curve, will work. Next thing, which I'm hoping you can see on here, instead of being parallel to the workpiece, I angle it diagonally. That helps build our shape. Got a lump there I've got to get rid of. Again, fingertips is going to tell me what's going on, where do I want to come back to. The one amazing thing we're trying to do this, first we'll get it nice and fluid, push through equally. Make sure it's sharp is another fundamental thing. How do I know if I'm square? I'm sighting where I've got the start point is here. So if I actually get a line, now I can see I've got a line there. I've obviously got the saw cuts as well. Some of it is still as a guide. If that looks parallel across it, I must be pretty square. In other words, if the line was more angled one side or the other, gives me a guide of how far out of square I am and where I need to take material off of. 
Again, chasing back. I've got saw line there, one there. So I've got these little bits that I can see. At the moment, I'm coming back up to my start point and where the pencil line is at our guide for our curve. Get that. Trying to be nice and precise on the start bit. Pushing down firmly with the spoke shave, holding both hands, tend to cut pushing away from me. And I've got two of this cut because we are reducing the fibres as we go. So we've got support fibres. If I try and drag it up, the fibres are getting longer towards the middle, shorter towards this edge, you'll fold the fibres over. So this is all about cutting with the grain, getting the correct support. A little bit down in there, just to lose saw line. Nice and clean that side. Turn round. I'm going to go a bit more material on this side. So I'm going to go different spoke shape. I've set it up a bit heavier. Bolt removal. Just checking where things are. I've still got a couple of saw lines to get rid of down here. But like I said, this at the moment now is bulk removal. Coming down to the middle point, so I've got to turn over and pull it to there, then come back. And this is a different type of shaving I'm cutting now, a bit thicker. Bulk removal. Back to the nice finely set one. Again, got a little saw line. I don't know how much you can see. Let's have a look on the camera. Just down in here. Bear with us. Give me a breather just to do this and I can bring you in a bit. All right, so we've got a couple of little lines down in here. Got to get rid of those. Fingertips. I'm a little bit out of square. It's angling that way to exaggerate it, so I need more off my right hand side. Okay, nearly there. That's good. Just chasing those saw lines at the bottom. Get the saw line there. So I'm coming out here getting a break line of fibres. So I've actually got to turn round, blend those two together. So this is where the fibres start to get longer, coming back up the other side of the curve. Still got one saw line, bottom of the saw cut to get rid of in there. Went deeper with that one then, look. That's better. Trying to get a nice crisp shoulder top on the other side. So again, I angle it when I start, sit it on. Don't move anything until you've got it sat there nicely. Present it, then pull down. So it's all about getting the position before you try and move anything. Just blend in here now. Got a couple of chair marks. Okay. Hopefully, we will end up with a nice, clean curve. Now, by using the back of the pencil, by any dig into your chips, I'm going to feel it as I go down through and also show on the camera because I'll bounce off it. She's got a lovely clean curve. Won't need a lot of sanding. Great. Okay. That gets on a rail. Got a curve. We've got our buttonholes. Done. Ooh. So really now, Colin, we need, we need another question now. All right. Okay. Let's put the spoke shaves out of the way. Clear the mess. I knew this was going to be quite a, quite a heavy session, this, because I've got lots I want to do. 
one on the leg. Let's just bring this back a little bit on the camera. There you go. We've got our mortises. We've got those cut. We've got a couple of other pencil lines on here. There's one down there, mortises are there, so two inches away. And then I've got a line down through here. Now, I've already done one of these because I know this is going to need a little bit. So, and by a little bit, a little bit of work, a bit of effort. So I'm just going to take the mask and tape off. I want the legs to taper. Makes it look more elegant. So I cut these off. All right. So I've done one side. Oh, that's off of there. We've now got to do this side. So the corner that is left is the corner where there aren't any mortises. So in reality, tapers out from the corner. But I've got to cut all the way down through there. <sighs> okay. Now, Colwyn, do, do you want to come and do this one and I'll come and do the camera for you, if you wish? No, no? All right, right, okay. Yeah. All right. Can you just go back to main camera, mate? Go on, let's have a quick look. I've just set this up on the vice. I've got it here. I'll try and have a quick look on there. Let's bring that back on the overhead just a little bit. You get an idea. I've got material this side to come off. Can we probably just have a look on there as well? Give the guys an idea of what I'm. So, camera free, just a minute. Hopefully, you can see I've got a line that comes from there, comes diagonally across, down through. Now, we've deliberately put it in the mice, and I think you can get the bearings of nothing there. So, I've tapered it back. You'll see that on camera too in a second when we do that. I've done that for a reason. Now, most of us, if we were going to put this in the vice, it'd be interesting to know where you'd have it. Would you? Right? And then you get your saw and you cut it. Or. Do you lay it back a bit? I'd love to know. But you, you know. So let's have a show of hands. All right, you're going to count them, Cohen. All right, okay. Now, by laying it back, it's going to make it easier for me to control and create a straight line. I said we're going to go with a different Japanese saw. This is a Z saw carpenter saw. Um, it's quite a beast. I love this. It's, it's, it's massive, this. It's like a Star Wars thing. All right, so... Tricky thing with this, nice and light to get it started. I use my fingernail, pinch my thumb, lock it in so I'm running the edge of the saw on my nail. Don't go pushing down too hard. This goes back to that discussion we had earlier. Okay, got it started. My hand for the handle right on the end. Left hand, I can actually add this control. So I'm moving my body now so my handle and my arm can clear my body. My left hand adds a little bit of weight. Do the vice up a bit more. Need to drop down in the vice again. I've pulled up a bit. But to there. Going to move it along. Okay. Camera two will probably show you nicely there. We've got a long section within this now. That's helping give us a straight line, something parallel. Moving up, still got long bearing of the saw run.
Really, Dad? And again, that'll cut nicely on the pull strut. So quite a lot of effort. And yeah, I know, you'd all love your bandsaw by now, wouldn't you? Carl, wouldn't you? You'd do this by hand, wouldn't you? Oh, okay. I'll take that as a no then. Okay. So this is what we cut off. Down through. We haven't cut it, you know, we've got a taper. Down nicely. So now what we've got to do is plane those in. Okay. Something just to go under there, add a bit of support, bring it back. So this is about stopping it moving. Back in the vise, got a bit of a square section in there, that's good. Plain. Whew. Select weapons again. Going with two. Let's move the saw, put it out of the way, we're done with that. Quick tidy up. Called cool breather. Okay. Ooh, what should we go with? We go with four to start with. So number four plane, bit of candle wax. Don't need much, just a little. Then break it forward, find our cut. Why have they gone with the four? Because it'll bridge across the high and low spots. I've got a little bit of material to knock off first. I've got a line back here and I'll go get to. Need bigger arms, Jason. Oh, I'll keep going. Come down through. So this is about hitting the high spots to start with. I'm deliberately coming back, heading towards the pencil line is on this end. Just want a quick look on the end, see where I am. You've got that nice in there. I've got a set of ring calipers. So I've set that up to the size I want this end to be. So I can size it with the width. Give me something as a quick and accurate check to where we need to be. Bolt removal done. So number four, a bit lighter to control. I've got number five now. A bit longer, help me get that straight edge. And not set quite as aggressively. Now this will help me get a nice straight edge. Hey, what's wrong with that? A nice candle wax helps it glide easier. Reduces the friction. Quick check on what's happening. Now again, we're working larger to smaller in size. So the fiber is actually supporting. If I try and come from the far end up to the top, I'm going to break those fibers over. It won't cut as well. A little bit to go there. Back up to the top end. Bringing that back to where the pencil line starts. Whoops. That's better. And straighten things up. Looking good. Fantastic, good. Right, let's have a quick look on there. To get our shape, nice and clean. Mm, just seeing where we are time-wise. So, so, 
Go do the other one. Bit of a hump here, so I've got to get rid of that first. It's where the thaw will be good because it will support across that quite quickly. Allow me to knock off that high bot. Start to get the shape. Okay. Right, start to clean it up. Colwyn sat in here in disbelief of the... This all involves manual labour. No, you can't have a crash. I haven't finished. In a minute. <laughs> I'll get this done, then, then you can have your question. I can have a breather while I set up to glue the top, okay? Ooh, lots to go on here. Everybody's admiring your effort, Jason. Sorry? Everybody's admiring your effort. It's physical labour, this, you know. But... That joyful, nice clean shaving, nearly there. I still think we ought to do uh, Maria's idea of all swap rooms. So I'll go in the wood turning room. Who's coming in the hand tool room? Who wants to have a go? It's purgatory. Getting the shaving stuck in the mouth now. I need to clean those out. Right, nearly done, guys. So that word of number five cutting really nicely. Um, new thing with these, we've got English made blade we're putting in these, which is quite a unique thing, I think. Uh, I've looked at the blades, they're nice and flat, they're level. Need sharpening when you get it. Go do that in a couple of weeks' time in the video. So what you do when you get a new blade, what needs looking at? Good there. Just coming back up to here. All right, nearly done, mate. And then you can have your question, all right? Okay. Do. Okay. So, we now have our nice tape all the way down. Nice and smooth, won't need sanding, no brazier. Need to clean the outsides up. I'm not going to do that now. We're going to do that, probably sand that, we'll see. The only thing I would plane would be the flat area here. Let's have a look on Freya a minute, Colin. I'd plane this very lightly to clean up the marking out marks. I wouldn't sand it, you roll it. You soften it too much. I want to keep it flat. So I'd plane those in, clean these all up. Right, okay. Let's have your question, what have you got? No, it's your glowing there, Jason. Um, is he going to do the other three now? Or? I've done the other three, actually. We we did do a little bit of prep before we came in here. Yeah, go on. Um, the way you were holding the leg there, is there a tendency or a fear of bowing it as as it's gripping um, the device? Got, it did worry me a little bit, but you're not putting that much weight on it. You're pushing plane. It would be nice on occasion, actually, I've done two together, and it can be good to put them up on the bench with a stop bar. I actually have a stop bar that'll fit into the Veritas, into the bench holes here, Veritas one. But it's in the room somewhere, and I can't remember where we've hidden it. So I need to find it. But you could have a bench stop there and plane down and clamp down. All right, this way I actually had it on there, bar and underneath. So you're still not going to get too much flex. So it's a bit cold. And if you go, let's have a look. Camera two for me, though. So I've got a piece of oaken under here. That stops it moving, clamped up in the vice this end. So it doesn't flex too much. That's good. All right. Um, and Jenny's just asking, is there a minimal size to go to that 
you know, what strength. have you like? So this comes down to my fingertip. Um, you're going to say, what's your fingertip? Okay, hang on then. I've got to get technical now. Look, um, I like these to really taper down. So that's 18 mil at the bottom square. The chirp, where it's square section, 48. So quite a, quite a nice taper, but it makes it look more elegant, okay? Um, I think what I'll try and do before we do the session next week, because that's the one where we finish off this bit, is try and give you those sizes. So if you wanted to make this size table, you can. Okay. Next little bit just to do, because we need this for next week. Okay. Where did I put everything? We have one, two... I want to glue the top up. So the top I've already machined out. I did a little bit of machining on Monday, Tuesday when we came back in. So this again is out of tulip wood. This was one board. We had a bit of a bark edge along here. It's a bit cold. If you go camera free, though. So this was the bark edge of the tree. This is where it came for the mill. And they debark it, make sure there's no stones or anything in it where they drag it out of the forest. I can't use that bit, so I had to cut it off. So we lost that. On here, I've done these, so these all fit in. So there. Now, I don't know if you can see. I think you can. Let's see which way. I go the other way. Look. Amazing colour in this. Got this lovely stripe that I really liked. Comes down. So this would have been one board, whichever way it was. Continued. So I've cut it. I'm going to join it. Only other thing I've done here is reverse the boards. So the one on the front, centre of the tree is up. The one nearest me, the grain is down. So it reduces any cupping across the top. So I've already looked at that. They're going to come together. I've got a couple of pencil lines to tell me where I want them. So we need to glue them together. I've got two sash cramps in underneath. If you put three, what tends to happen is you put all the pressure on one side, and we're going to use three clamps, but I don't want them on one side. It'll push it up, and the board will kick out. It will cap it too much as well when you glue it up. So we're trying to keep the pressure equal. So I've got the two boards there. I want two waste sticks either side. That's about not damaging the workpiece. It also helps transmit the pressure along. So we've got those in. That's good. Third clamp I've got over here. Now, what should we go? I've got some tight bond glue to do this. I've got the... Frames, which we'll discuss in a minute with you. So the glue is just going to put a bead along here. I hope. It's on its way. There you go. And again, yeah, I've already kind of checked these over, made sure they come together nicely. Silicon glue brush. The with this is, if you forget to clean it, that never happens, does it? Forget to clean it, you can actually peel the glue off when you're done. So this has little rubber silicon tips. Helps reduce how much we've got on there. Get my little pot that I've got there so we can stand it in. Don't need too much glue. I've probably got enough for all of us there. Just taking that back and out of the way so I can get into here nicely. First thing I want to do, just going to do a little bit of a rub joint, rub the two together. Put that in. A couple of other clamps. Some small F clamps. The reason I've gone with these, the heads aren't very deep here, so they're great to get in under the boards when they're held in the sash clamp up on the bench. So I've got good access. It helps level this end up before I even start. If I go with a normal G clamp on it, I've got to pick everything up. More problematic. So this will help me flatten stuff. In the middle here, it's a little bit of a step, not much. I can move things about though. So I can use my hands up on there. So I can lift the boards up and down. I can get things dead flat. So I work back towards where I've got the clamp pressure. So done clamp up, left hand side. That one's okay. Reach for the other clamp. We're going to put one across the top. This is about trying to balance things out. Don't go tightening up too much to start with or you're going to pop it in the sash clamps, and distort it. Now, I've got a step here. So I can pull the boards about with my hand. I could even, let's just put that other little F clamp in there. 
great way of just holding that down. I've still got a step from there. Okay. No, if you can get a bit more that way for you, Cohen. Now I've got a bit of a ridge there. So we need to get rid of that. So let's just undo this clamp. I'm gonna, I can pull the boards about. So I can play with my hands quite nicely on this just to get this level. So finger tight, check what I've got. Steps there. So undo, pull it up, push it down again. So you can work this. Don't go just thinking you're going to throw this in a pair of clamps and everything will just come out dead flat. Why no biscuits? Um, difficult to do a biscuit joint with hand tools. Um, I could put a groove, I suppose, in a false tongue. But old traditional tables and everything like this would have just been back glued together. Modern day glues have probably got to be better than what we had back 150, 200 years ago. Got to be better, are they? I know they are because it's already going off. Look. Okay, good. Just playing around with levels, get things nice and cleaned up there. And again, you can see how I can play with my hands, pull that up and down. Little clamp on the end, flattens it back, tighten these up. One, two. Equal pressure. That'll help pull everything nice and flat, not distort it. We've now got something no lip. Real easy to do. So the little air clamps serve a real purpose for this. You're keeping things flat. Free sash clamps are great for that. Occasionally I've had people look up and say, and I don't know, this might be Colwyn's question. Would you go parallel dual clamp? Not for this. I find the head's too deep. But we're going to use or explain that in a second. Go on then, Colwyn. Let's have your question. So... Everybody's saying well done on the effort today, first of all. Um, Frederick's, Frederick's question, is the timber for the top, was it um, supplied as um, prepared all round, planed all round, or did you have to um, thickness it first? I thickness the top, and then I did the edge just to clean it up. When we ripped off this bit, I did it by hand. It's not even, it's lovely and straight, look, Cohen. Cohen, you can be, no, it's not straight down through there. I mean, I can... Gives you a great angle down for it. I don't know if you'll see that on camera too. But I hand cut that off, hand planed it in. So put the two boards together. Actually, when I hand planed them, stack them in the vice, skim down it. My worry with this session is how much we wanted to get done. So well, Colwyn's just said, I'm going to just bring this in. Right, okay, mate, go on, we got. So um, a couple of people are just asking, would you normally biscuit joint the top? On these, when we've done them as course, no. I just prefer a glue joint for that. I've never had a problem. The major thing with that is make sure the material is dry. Okay? That's important because obviously if it's got moisture in it, it's going to cause problems. I'm not a lover of a biscuit joint. Don't uh, There are uses for. I've occasionally done tops like that where your biscuit joint and them suddenly find they're not level. And you can't alter it. So I prefer that butt joint for there and you use your glue. Depends on the thickness. If I was making a big farmhouse table, no, definitely biscuit joint. Next one. Um, so Jenny's asking, if there is a tiny lip, could you not just sand it out? Who, who, who asked that? Sorry, Cohen? That was Jenny. Okay. Can, can you buy me a sander? Can you please send it to Axminster <laughs> Tools, Devon, England? Okay. Um, a sander? What's that? Um, okay. This is the sander. Okay. This will probably be the sand of mine, just to clean it up with. So tend to be cabinet scraper, then might end up hand sanding it. So the better I can get it flat, the better it's going to be. All right. Oh my God. Sander. Do you have a sander home coming? I would have all the power tools out by now, all to right. be honest. No. So I was hoping to do, but I'm going to do it before we get in next week. I'm going to glue. I've got the frames done. This is the short frames, okay? The narrow ones. All right. So. We've got our curve, we've got our joints cut, we've got things go together. So on these, when I glue these up, and I'll do the long ones with you, I think, or the short ones, I'll get two sets glued up and then we can do the other two on the video. I'd glue those together with a parallel clamp. So let's just finger tighten it so I can pick it up. So I'd have that. So definitely do those on a parallel clamp. That's better for that. I said, don't use these for, for your panel boards, like your tabletop, I find the head's too deep here, it makes it problematic. Your pressure point is here. That's not running them down, that's saying they have uses. On this, this is great. I can get lots of pressure in line with where the tenon actually is and the mortises are. Put lots of force in there if I need to, but also keeps it nice and square. 
Also, I have a bar section down through the top here, which I got as a reference point to where things line up. So if things aren't right, I can clamp things against it, pull them forward or back. So there are differences in clamps. So before we get in next week, we will have two ends or two sides glued up. We'll do the other two on the video. We're then going to make the buttons. If you'd like to send me some buttons, that would be good. I like plain chocolate ones, not milk. Oh, my God. All right. How you doing, mate? We got anything else? All done. Right, good. Hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed this. Quite a marathon session. I knew there was lots of physical nature going to be in this one with the hand play and everything else, right? So I did realize that. and I, It was kind of a race of how much we can get done. So I hope this hasn't looked too rushed, but I know there was a lot to do. Who bought these polyester shirts? Okay, right. So we're working wisdom. We'll be back next Tuesday. Cohen's back doing, we're doing sci-fi thing next Spaceship. Tuesday. Sorry? Spaceship. Spaceship. Did you hear that? It's like spaceship. Whoa. All right. So Cole will be doing the spaceship. I'm in here Wednesday doing the rest of your table, put it together. So you've got your side table. I will do a plan and a cutting list, if you like, in the week. So we can get that up for you. We will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Give us the thumbs up. Give us all that subscription stuff and everything else. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>